Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we are doing a part two to the survival crop series that I did do last year. And last year, I based the entire video upon what types of crops do best in Canadian storage, all the way to which ones produce seeds and why that is important when selecting a survival crop. Now, in this video, I'm actually going to be going into a little bit more depth as to a broad range of crops that you may want to look at when it comes to preparing or collecting seeds for a survival garden. And this is going to be completely based upon a few factors. The first one, again, is going to be storage. Secondly, the ability to save seeds. Thirdly, whether or not it has to be started outdoors or not. What can be started through winter sowing or has to be started indoors early, which will obviously negate this from happening. Because if it's a survival crop, you may not have grow lights. And then even some flowers that you may want to throw into the mix to ensure a very bright and hearty harvest. So buckle up your seatbelts and let's jump into survival crops. Gardening in Canada is difficult. It's an extreme sport at the best of times. And as a Canadian gardener, there's a lot of things that go through your mind or through my mind anyways, in regards to whether or not if the world ended, if I could even get seeds for a lot of my crops and whether or not those seeds would germinate. So seed germination is a huge factor in a survival crop. And a really great way to know if your seeds are viable or if they're Canadian hardy or whether or not they would work in an apocalyptic world would actually be to do germination tests on your seed saving that you've done. And because we're in a world that is thriving and doing well right now, it's a good time to test your seed saving abilities. So doing a simple germination test on your seed collection this year before actually putting them in the ground is a great way to determine what you're doing right and what you may be doing wrong. Now, my preferred method is actually putting it on paper towel, wet paper towel, and then putting it in a Ziploc for approximately a week, sometimes two weeks, and seeing what growth I get off of that or what percentage of those plants survive. Now, based on that germination rate, I then typically would take that percentage and determine why some of them didn't germinate. Was it my storage method or was it something as simple as not having pollinated seeds? Best way to know this is actually to give the seed a feel. If this seed feels hollow inside and you cut the seed open, and you don't see any cotyledon type uh, starchy stuff in there, that's a great sign that you have low rates of pollination. So something like self-pollination may be the fix to that, or something as simple as adding more flowers or a cover crop such as alfalfa to your garden in the, during the year would be the fix to ensure better pollination in the years to come. If you touch it and it feels very full, you cut it open and you can see a lot of endosperm in there, you can see a lot of starch in there, then it actually might be your storage. And specifically, it could be both the moisture, but also the air slash gas exchange. So the best way to store seeds is actually in paper bags because it allows for both air exchange and for moisture to be able to penetrate it. There is a tiny little organ on the outside of the seed called the microphile or microfeel. And what that is, is it's kind of like a little tunnel from the outside into the actual embryo where the seed is. If that is at all oversaturated with water, doesn't have enough moisture or is blocked from actual gas exchange, the embryo inside dies. Think of it as the umbilical cord to the seed's survival. So make sure to check that out and see if the survival crops that you decided to plant yes last year and the seeds that you saved, how many of those are viable and what types of things you may need to tweak in order to have a proper survival crop 
crop in the years to come. Another really great way of checking your survival crop or your uh, seed saving abilities is actually doing winter sowing. And the reason why I encourage people to do this in order to see how your survival crop is doing is because generally when we grow seeds in Canada, the ones that pollinate in Canada, pollen in your area, will have a diverse host of different parents. It's very unlikely that an open pollinated plant would be strictly self-pollinated. You may end up with variability in the offspring. So a really great way to check what kind of viable offspring you have and whether or not that viable offspring can be started in a cold Canadian spring is actually to winter sow them. So do the typical milk jug trick, put them outside, count your seeds and see how many of those seeds that you counted turn into plants. This is a good indication as to what parent material you have in your seeds. What can happen is when you put plants into a colder climate and you grow them in that colder climate, such as my zone in zone three, you will end up with parent material that is viable or hardy to cold and therefore has a level of cold resistance. Think of it as almost like a hybrid experience experiment without the laboratory side of everything. So see what you get and then once you know that the parent material that was put into that plant, the plants that are winter sown, you can actually take those winter sown plants that survived and allocate them to a specific zone in your garden or area in your garden grow them there and then harvest those seeds and label them as winter hardy or cold tolerant varieties, hybrids, whatever you want to call them that you actually grew in your zone. This is very important because you are slowly building up a seed collection that is viable to your area. And then lastly, when it comes to storage and our ability to store anything, if you notice that one variety or one type of plant actually stores a little bit better, whether that be through cold storage or freezing or even drying, whatever the case is, then make sure you note that in some sort of a journal or on the actual seed packet itself and then regrow that variety or that brand the next year and do another test and see if those ones are just as viable. If they are storing a little bit better, that is again another parent characteristic that you may want to amplify in your seed collection. This is all a part of building up a seed collection meant for your area or for your zone, which is essentially what a survival garden is. I know this was a super short video, but one of my most popular vi videos is actually that survival garden video, which was done when I was really premature. I don't even know if I had a mic yet for filming. It was, I just, I personally don't like it a ton, but it's got like nearly 12,000 views on it. So I thought I should make a supplement video to that and kind of how you can build off of the video that I posted a year ago. I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. Be sure to share it to anyone that you think would enjoy this and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.